Hi, and thanks for joining me today in another program of Painting with Tali, your art collection. Today we're doing the Japanese Tea Garden in San Francisco. I was there about two weeks ago having tea in, at the tea house. And from the tea house, uh, you can see the garden. It's a beautiful landscape. They bring, you your, they bring you your tea and your cup and some variety of cookies. And these beautiful little birds, they're blackbirds, they're starlings, I think. They hang around after, you know, there are crumbs and whatever. But that's why our, sub our subject for today is that. As you can see, we did all of our drawing in charcoal, which is basically your charcoal stem, and this is your canvas board. You buy that anywhere. Um, so we're going to kind of accentuate some areas where we want that to be a little darker, you know, because after you spray the first time, you spray it again the second time, and then it makes it a deeper tone. Like, for example, some areas down here, I want that. And you can just go over it a little bit over with your dry brush or with your finger, which I'm doing right now because all my brushes, I dipped them in the water, so I don't have a dry brush right now to um, kind of show you to smooth it out. See how the blackbird is smoothed out? That's with the dry brush. Okay, and then from there, we spray, we, we spray it so I can fix in well what you covered in black, okay? All right, so we're going to select some colors and put our charcoal away. And before selecting colors, we get the white gesso paint. The one that I love using is one from Utrecht. The one is this one from Utrecht um, because it has great coverage and it's really nice and pasty. Sometimes I do that instead of black, I mean, I'm sorry, instead of white, instead of using white. I like using that. So what I want with that is probably to clean out some areas that I want. Okay, as you can see, I'm cleaning out these areas. These are like little bushes there. Let me get some more. This is going to be a red tree. This tree is, is uh, I think it's a Japanese oak. It's right there at the garden. Oh, this garden, the history of this garden is quite interesting. Actually, it's quite interesting. Actually, this garden is 100 years old. In 1994, it um, became 100 years old, and they celebrate it. It's uh, its 100th birthday. And so it was put together as, um, as an exhibition in 1884, um, and this landscape artist, a landscape designer, I, you know, the Japanese names, they're very difficult so they can stay in your head, you know. Um, Makoto Hagiwara, he was a landscape designer, and he was the one that basically the, the number one person that had to do with the garden's construction. A lot, of the, a lot of the cost of the pavilions there, the temples as they, they're known for, we call them as temples. We know them, we know them as temples. A lot of them were done, uh, financed by him. In fact, he used to live there with his family it, what in what now is, is considered to be the, um, the gift shop. When you go to the garden, there's going to be a gift shop. Well, the gift shop, the gift shop used to be the house of, the, um, of that family, Hagiwara, Makoto Hagiwara's family. And eventually, uh, they were there for 30 years, and the war came around, and we were enemies. You know, the United States w was, had, the, had Japan as enemies, and, and you know, they were taking Japanese people out of their homes, evicting them, and putting them in concentration camps, and that's what happened. This family uh, got, you know, got evicted from their beautiful garden home, and um, eventually they had to sell many of um, many of the uh, the collection. See, the Japanese garden in Japanese custom, it's the highest form of art is making gardens, because gardens are living things. And you compose, you know, special trees and rocks, putting them together, organizing them, um, 
it's like a living work of art. And so it's, uh, since it has maintenance and care and nurturing involved constantly on, as a cycle, like for the, th of like the seasons and stuff, it's a very high form of art. Anyway, they had a collection of trees, of this, of that, so many different things. Not, not only plants, but um, beautiful structures and works of art. And they were, of course, sold. And uh, the Hagiwara family, uh, did, you know, they lost their property. And now there's a plaque dedicated to them, to, to, to that family, in front of the park today. It exists. It, there's a plaque. But um, the, the garden was kept on, it kept on being nurtured. It was bought by um, the park department, the, par the Department of Parks uh, in, in San Francisco. It was bought by them, so it's part of the, the, the city of San Francisco. And, um, and, and many things were dedicated to the park, like, like this beautiful uh, Buddha, which is 220 years old. And it was cast in Japan. I don't recall right now what name of the town in Japan. but. Uh, as you can see, everything that I want, like see this, this um, little piece of um, this napkin, this napkin here, okay? I want that to come out as part of the design. So I want a little bit of more white right here because we're getting our light from, from in front. And we need probably a little bit of more light here on the cup. I want more light inside the cup. Yeah, that would do just fine. A little more light here. Sometimes I think I went a little too far with, um, with my um, charcoal drawing. Yeah, a little more light there. And uh, these cookies, well, well, they're supposed to be cookies. Okay. Okay, those are these little cookies that they serve you there. Tea and cookies is about like three dollars. So that, but when I sat down to drink that tea, I thought I was only going to be there like, yeah, okay, I'll take twenty minutes to drink the tea because I got to go see this, got to go see that, many different parts of San Francisco, and. Um, no, I stayed there more than 20 minutes drinking this tea because I entered in a state of heaven, a state of peace. So I started, that's when I got used to drinking green tea. So green tea has a lot of benefits to it. A lot of benefits. A lot of health benefits, I guess, what they talk about. So here I am cleaning and cleaning areas that I want. Okay. Okay. Oh, I want more kind of like ripples here. Uh, if you don't like something, you just erase it. Okay, with a wet sponge. Okay. 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 Now let's add here a little bit of white. And a little bit on the beak of this bird. I want to get a little bit of reflection there on it. And of course, a little eye on it. Yeah, something like that about it. OK. 
Now, I do need a little bit more of the accent here. Right, and we have to spray it. And we're going to go and put some color on. First and foremost, I want to get that bird in a purple tint to it. Instead of using it black, 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 I want a purple tint to that bird. Let's see what brush we can use here. Okay. Okay. So we're applying here. So that bird has that kind of purple tone to it. all over it, because that's the way it looked. I mean, it looked just all dark. All right. I want some kind of like green. And OK. I want to kind of. Yeah, get this in a green tone. Glaze it in a green tone. See, this is the best way to paint. Where you do your charcoal drawing already. And you just glaze over. And then you do your white highlights. and you just glaze over. If it's really, really dark, you just tap it. OK. I like that about that. Um, the, um, the landscape, the water, whatever, uh, you want to make it get some kind of like, kind of like brown or green. A little bit of brown there. No, that's green. Um, it's green. Yeah, brown. There's a brown to it. Yeah, there's like a brown to it, a brown greenish to it. OK. Yeah, there's a brown greenish to it back here. About it. And see the whites that I put under it come out. OK, and then I'm going to bring it into a more green. Uh-huh. Bring it into a more green. And around here. This might be a little too, too green, so I'm going to blot it, blot it out. Yeah. OK. That's perfect. And there's a tree back there, which is like this um, reddish color.
let me get a, a, a reddish tone about it. You know, I, I really, um, I don't like talking about colors. I mean, I, I just get your colors and experiment because um, talking and explaining about colors, I mean, it's, it's just impossible. It gets in the way of my, of um, trying to, in the middle, create. So I got like a, like a reddish brown and, and some red actually. Because there is a tree which has that foliage there in the garden. It's a, it's a very important accent in the garden. Okay. See, I did the drawing and it all comes out because I did, you do the drawing and then at the end of the drawing you do your super highlights with your um, white. And then it comes right out, your tree comes right out. Okay, these right there, see that's the only thing that's red in, in the garden. Now something that is very, very dark are the leaves here. Okay. Okay. All right. So those are the leaves that are there in that bamboo. And we're going to continue with some green. We need some green. But that green has to be more bluish, because it, it's, that's how it is. That's how the plant looks. It has a, it has a bluish tone, not a really, it has a bluish tone to it. A bluish tone of green. These little, they, they taper them. They manicure them, they're manicured gardens. Okay, so I blot with my hand, get exactly what I want, okay. There's another one here. Okay. And uh, there's some here, but those look more yellow, more yellowy browns about it. Those have a little more yellow brown about it. So that's what I want to do there. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm kind of blotting it, blotting it. Yeah. That's what I want there. Behind that is more of a darker, deeper green tree. See, they use different contrasts. You know, a Japanese garden is like a painting, except they paint, they, it's just, it's three-dimensional. You know, when I'm, when I'm doing copies of, well, not copies, examples from models of, Jap of the Japanese garden in San Francisco, as I've done it before, I see myself that I don't go exactly sometimes how the garden is, uh, you know, step by step, petal by petal, tree by tree. You know, I go generally in the composition that it has, and then I get my final, my final image. As you can see, I'm using that deep green where the deep spots of shadow are on my tree. Now, went back to a little purple there. I'm going to go back to some light brown for it. Then I'm going to, let me go into kind of some yellow yeah, so I can get some kind of yellow of these rocks here, or some kind of mossy rock situation. That's what I want, mossy rock situation. Right there. Now it's changed to more mossy green rock situation, but I still have the highlight, the highlighted, um, these here, these, I gotta get some white, I gotta get some yellow. And this time we're not going to glaze, no, 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 because we got white. Now that we have white, 
we're not glazing, we're painting because now it covers over. It will cover over. See what I mean? But it's not exactly the color I want. So I need more lighter, lighter yellow and white in there to give me what I want. Okay, which it's not at all. So it all has to be erased. So I'm erasing all of it. Just get your moist sponge and I'll do it. Um, what's bothering, okay, so what I'm gonna do is this. Clean up, clean up and then you, you go on your um, sponge here. Uh, clean up, get blue, super blue, super brown, make a super black, clean up in there. Clean up in here. That's what you want to do. I still like my color there that I didn't lose, but I have filters of that reddish uh, from that plant, from the paint for that plant, and I don't want it. So, back to white, yellow. Right now, the paint is very, very fresh, and it doesn't give me the right texture that I want it to be. Okay, that's the problem right now but eventually I'll get it. Okay, and I more or less got it right there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, actually, that is a little more, yeah, uh, brown tone. That was too brown. More, yeah. Uh, here I am being perfectionist because you see, I, I, I was just in fine art, painting fine art for the galleries, and. And uh, I've become too perfectionist. And so when you do a TV show, you're not doing the perfectionist thing. It's like, it's like singing lounge jack to opera. It's like coming from opera to lounge jacks. And uh, it's, a whole different, it's a whole different form of painting. So I'm trying to get the practice back. This show is the first show that I do in, in many, since many, 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 many shows. And the last two were not successful. I'm trying to do a successful show. Because TV painting is a whole different thing. It has, it's a whole different thing. So I got to establish back here the foliage. I know that I need that more purple. So let's go into purple, a little bit of blue. Uh, I need this a little more purple here. OK. Uh-huh, that, I got paint blocking there. I want the transparencies. I don't want to lose my charcoal design, all right? Okay, so right there, I'm going in with the purples. Let me get a little bit of the brown, because I need some browns about it here on that. A little bits of browns about it. Um, and then tender, tender, tender brown and yellow because it has these little rock stones, these little stones that go into the water. This part of the garden was built later on. It wasn't in the early days. We're going to mix a little bit of purple and, bl and blue, fuchsia and blue, because there are some accents here that I want to capture. And there is, of course, that branch here where I want to capture that, too. And we better kind of wrap it up a little bit here because this is the ending of the first part of the Japanese tea garden. So don't miss the second part. We'll be right back with another program, the second part of the Japanese Tea Garden. Don't miss it. This is Tali signing off.
I'd like to thank the people at Utrecht for their donation of professional art colors, manufacturing acrylic paint since 1957. Thank you, Graphic Dimensions, for your generous support of Painting with Tali, your art collection, with quality frames for fine art. I'd like to thank the people at Utrecht, manufacturers of fine art materials, located here in Columbus at 612 North High Street. I'd like to thank Monks for their professional service and support in our downtown community, located at 47 East Gay Street.
Hello and thanks for joining me on the second part of the Japanese Tea Garden. We're going to continue right away with the coloring. Uh, we want to have that bamboo come out beautifully. Kind of glowing a little bit. So I want to put in just a dash of orange to the brown that I have. Just a dash of orange. Just because I want it to glow just a little bit. So the Brilliant Orange is really good for that when you want something to kind of glow out. Right. So that's what I'm doing right here. Of course, I'm using kind of like a small brush, and so my coverage isn't that quick as I want it to be. Only like in the areas of precision that a small brush works for you. Okay. All right, let's go down there a little bit here. Okay. All right. I'm not going to worry too much about it because on, on um, what I'm seeing right here, live, what my eyes are seeing, the phenomenon of me painting on top of this canvas looks one way. On video, it looks much less severe. What I'm saying, the um, imperfections can't be seen on video as I can see them here. So I, wor I, I try not to worry about them too much, but I did want to have kind of greenery to that. It does get a little bit into my bird, but it's okay. The bird is much darker and you can't even notice that. Oh, that bird also needs a little bit of greenery um, right here between its legs here because of the water that is influenced right there. Let's go with that rock right over here. And kind of, well, it is kind of blue, but right now we don't really want a blue. We want that, but that is two of another color. So we do just sponge it off. OK, we want the rock to be more blue more blue. Okay, more rock-like. Okay, that's a good tone for it. Uh, all of this right there, let's give it more like a, a green-blue feeling. A little bit of the blue and green feeling there, just to get kind of depth, because there's depth right there from the foliage. And if you put in a little purpleness, about it, you'll be, it'll be more effective, more effective, more effective. Up there, we'll go with a little more of the green. Well, I had the purpleness, and I went into the lime green, and then came out with this moss just now, which is doing the trick. The moss, the moss, the moss. OK, behind that moss, that sky, that is the blue sky. A little bit of white, a little bit of blue we just got there, a little bit of white here. We're messing around with some sky here, OK? We know that there is some sky there. All right. We're on the blues. We need some, you know, some, some blue, some sky blue about it. So uh, there are going to be some blues that uh, have to be somewhere in the composition around here. That they're going to come out, that sneak out, they sneak out. Some blues sneak out through the foliage background. OK? Um, we got to go with um, the rocks again. So, 
What I'm doing is this is chaotic. This is chaotic um, coloring. I mean, I'm I'm picking up colors everywhere, finding colors, um, however they land. Here, these rocks were kind of gray. I didn't want them too gray, so I'm going to a little more 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 brown. Um, now that I'm in that brown, I wanted to go here and cover that with brown. Uh, it's doing it for me. You see how I do the charcoal drawing, and then when I go over my glazing, the, the white highlights do the rest of the charo oscuro for me. Okay, so that's how it comes out. It comes out. That's 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 how it comes out. Um, gotta need something here with the cookies that is more brighter. You know, um, these cookies are different toasted colors, and uh, there were a nice variety of cookies. Uh, let me select, I need some red, hold on, some red, you know. Okay. Some maybe, some pink about the cookies. One there, okay. Some little bit of toasted, a little bit of toasted color on that, some lighter tone lighter tone here, okay, and a uh, little pink there. You know, there were just little colors of cookies. There were, some of them were kind of pink, from what I remember. It was a nice little array of cookies. I really very, I enjoyed so, mer so very much um, being there at the garden uh, last month. And uh, the cookies were very good. I liked them. It was very nice. Now, the cookies may have a lot of pigment, more than I want right now. That is why I then blot, blot, blot. I have to be careful on blotting, because so, I don't want it to uh, fall into the rest. The colors fall. I don't want to talk. I do not want to talk. I hate talking. I don't feel like talking. All right. Green for that. Yeah, for that tray. Green for that tray will do. And kind of like a violet for this cup. Will this cup do well in violet? Uh, no, I don't like it in violet. So it's coming off. No, I don't like it in violet. I will probably like it in, in what? Let me see. In um, red. A little bit of like rose to it. Yeah, I like it in that, in that color much better. Okay. Um, up there, oh yes, 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 yes. We gotta get to it, let's get to a more, a bigger brush that covers more. Hold on. Um, up there, we're going with some greens. Greens, okay, let's go into more brown greens. Uh, yeah, more brown greens. And yeah, we need more brown greens to cover around there. Um, 
uh, let's go into a purple green. That, yeah, some blue greens. Uh huh. Blue greens to cover around here. Okay. Okay, yellow greens. Yellow greens to give the effect. Because partially it's your charcoal drawing. This is the glazing of your charcoal drawing. And um, you may think that, you know, because see, half of the work, instead of painting, drawing while you're painting, I, I drew with charcoal and then glaze over, fills in the glaze. I, I actually paint with the charcoal. It's like dry painting. Because you move the charcoal with your dry brush. It's what I do, actually. For those of you who don't really know, um, the process that I use in painting. Well, so first I do the drawing, and then the drawing is set. OK. Right now, I get all this glaring. OK. Okay, so we need I'm trying to get a creamy brown here to work with right now. There was a friend of mine who who stayed who saw me painting. Um, well, she was in my studio one day, and she saw me, you know, working in action. And she never knew, she never knew um, how much, you know, effort it was. I mean, how, she says, you really, you know, busted yourself there doing that. Um, and it is. I mean, most people think that, that painting just is something that comes easy. No. There's hard work in it. This is total chaos. All of this is chaos. There's one person responsible for all this organization of charcoal, of all these materials found in nature. And that is the artist, you know. So figurative, you know, you have to take your hat off to figurative. Figurative art. OK, I'm kind of going over and covering these because I need those to come up. I have 18 minutes. This green will work just fine up there. And right next to those, yeah, a light, this light green will do just fine right here, glazing in there. Glazing in there, OK. OK, that will do just fine. OK. It's really funny when I meet people, <laughs> people in public. I, you know, sometimes they, I feel so strange signing autographs. <laughs> it, it's like, you know, why would anybody really want my autograph? But sure, I'll give you my autograph. It is flattering to me. Beautiful. There we're doing the garden well right there. This needs to be green, light green. There's this dried up paint there, this mound of, uh, of uh, light paint. It's, all, it's a dried up paint that I had here as a model so they can focus on the palette. And I go back to it and it's dried up, you know? So I have to remember which are my puddles of paint that are working there, not just the dry up ones. When I go to the dry up ones, it's not, they're not working for me, you know? OK, so we have that greenery there. That greenery should have a little bit of brown to it. Well, brown up here. OK, uh, we need a contrast. This has to be, it has to be kind of, kind of like a bright, 
kind of like a brown, kind of like a brown, huh? I'm not going to do it green. I'm not going to do it green exactly. Okay. Then the yellow. Then the yellow. That's what they do. They take different bushes, different tonalities of bushes. In fact, they have one there, which is like a purple, deep purple bl bush, like a blue, deep purple. But I'm not going to use it because the bird is already purple. But I'll give some accent of purple right around there. So I can contrast much better. OK, behind that bird, I need light, light yellow. So remember, there is an impressionistic part of glazing. Not only that you're glazing, OK, fine. A little bit of color here is OK. Um, I got it in by accident, actually. I wasn't really expecting it to. I wasn't really expecting it. I'm not liking it very much, so it's going off. OK, not liking it very much. OK, clean up, clean up. So as I was saying before, I was into, I was th for the last three months not doing new shows. Um, so I had a lot of reruns. And uh, I tried to do some shows again, and the thing is that I was so involved with fine art, I didn't have the patience anymore for TV art. Um, and I end up, you know, just being very frustrated. Uh, so. I, started, I decided to do this one in a two-part situation. OK, there we go. That is giving me some depth. OK. Right now, the canvas is shining. I can't really move that much. You know, I'm on camera. This show is done with no cameramen, you know, because um, this is not, you know, this, is, this show is, is done through public access television. This is not, this is not a professional show. You know, whoever th is, was thinking it's a professional show, you know, thank you very much for the compliment, but no, it's not a professional show. Okay? This show is done with only two people, Tolly and the person that's over there as my technical director, who, ref who may be whoever is, you know, available, whoever I may find available. Usually, you know, I stick with the same one for quite a while. So they kind of, you know, get the, the habit of working with me and, and know what I need and the results that I need, you know. In the beginning, I was more patient, but, but now I, I was, I'm not that patient as I, as I used to be while doing these shows. Okay, beautiful. The glazing on that came out lovely, just absolutely lovely. Uh huh. Okay. Um, back there might need some really bright highlight um, dabs of paint, but right now we got four minutes left. I want to do. I want to do the plant. You know. I want to do the plant there. Yeah. I want to do the plank. OK.
Okay, now, uh, now I hope I have some more of the same mixture here. See, there's a lot of engineering that goes into this. You gotta make sure that if you're gonna do a wash, you have enough mixture of the same color, so if you don't, if you run out of that color, you have to redo it and have problems matching it. You can go in here, it's okay. Okay, see? So the whole painting comes out because you did your drawing first. You did your drawing first. You established a chiaroscuro with your charcoal and, and your whites, your final whites that you wanted to use on your, on your composition. Okay, and now a little bit of purple and blue. All right, uh, purple and blue will do me just well for the shadowing that I need. Okay, so right there is what I want to do. Gives me some shadowing that I want. Okay. So, here we go. All right. Um, what do we have? Oh, we have seconds. So, Let's get me a little bit of purple here on that birdie. Yeah, to give it more of that highlight about it. He needs to come out more. Mm -hmm. And let me see, what else? Oh, I wanted some dibby dabbies of blue. Some blue sky dibby dabbies that are very, very important. Blue sky dibby dabbies through here. Okay? Yeah, that's very, very important on the piece. We need these sneaky ones peeking out. We're running out of paint, so we gotta get some more. Blue sky dibby dabbies. It helps me accentuate my leaves here. The wrong brush, sweetie. The wrong brush, honey. Ugh. There's, it, the wrong brush is like the wrong spouse. You cannot create anything with it. Okay, little bit dibby dabbies. I must be probably overdue on time. I'm kind of guessing. Um, but it's gorgeous. All right, now we're getting some green and some light, some white with that green, because we need for these to come up. We need for that distance to come up back there. You know, plastic language, explaining what you're explaining this is a, this, it's very difficult to do this. Um, so, it, it's very, I mean, it's very difficult. Plastic language is very difficult to, to do on air. So, as I'm doing these light highlights with the white and the green, to, just to, to accentuate what I need from the over the whole view of the garden. Okay, and, and probably need some here too. And we are at second seat. Right here is where we're needing those, exactly. Right here is where we're needing those. But I got to go, and we're gonna have to sign this one way or another. Oh, I'm signing it here. T A L I 99. And so, darlings, it's going to be me, the canvas, the camera. And after this picture, we'll make a new picture and another picture. You see, it's the world to me.
the lights, cameras, and uh, all you wonderful people out there in the suburbs. This is Tali, signing off. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. <laughs>